This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. It was just supposed to be a baseball game played back in 1955, but then it went on to make history and change the way we play ball in the South. Today, we meet some of the players, hear their stories, and talk about a film that captures this moment in time. The Aware Show starts right now. Hi, I'm Dee Dee Sharp and welcome to this special edition of The Aware Show. As always, we're glad to have you right there. Their baseball story, now captured on film, is endorsed by some of the greatest major league icons ever, including Hammer and Hank Aaron and Iron Man Calvin Ripken. I'm talking about the film entitled Long Time Coming, a 1955 baseball story. The documentary chronicles the historical significance of the all-black Pensacola JCs, an all-star team that advanced to the Little League State Championship in August 1955 to play ball with the all-white team, the Orlando Kiwanis. Well, the game was played at a time when racial segregation actually defined the South. The act of these two teams coming together in defiance to play the South's first integrated Little League baseball game made history and showed the world what courage, honor, and heroes are made of. Well, today on The Aware Show, we'll talk about our local sports history and show you the trailer from the film, Long Time Coming, a 1955 baseball story. To that in a moment, but first this, we want to introduce you to our guest here in the studio. We have former Little League baseball players, including Reverend Freddie Augustine, Willie V. Robinson, and Admiral Spider Leroy. We also have the film's producer, Ted Haddock, and director, John Strong. Thank you all for being here on The Aware Show. It's been a long time coming for us to just have you on here, and I'm glad to be sharing your story here. Thank you again for being here. We're going to start with our little leaguers, who are obviously not so <laughs> today. I want to talk about your experience going back to 1955. Willie, we'll start with you first. What was it like during this time? And we'll go to each of you and give you an opportunity to kind of take us back to, to the 1950s and the way you were living life through your your lens? Well, it really wasn't um, a shock to me because it was 11 children in my family and we were Christian abiding family and we took things as they came and as they went. So in turn, we all played together. All, I mean, it was many young black boys playing. We had four teams, and all of, and the ones we had a lot of them couldn't even get on the team because it was not not enough teams. So we had fun. We made playing baseball fun. So when we got to be 12 years old, they picked all stars, and it was picked. They were picked by the coaches of all teams, and I was one of them. And I had a big head, oh, I ain't about nothing. <laughs> so we make a long story short, the, the white team, the, the Junior Chamber of Commerce uh, was asked to play the Chamber of Commerce, which was the white team. And they said, oh, we're not going to play those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they said, OK, y'all can go down to Orlando and play the team down there, the white team down there. We really didn't know that whoever won was the champions of the South. But we went down there and we was in R just playing them. And matter of fact, that's the first time we had ever really sit in an audience of lots of white people. But they weren't hostile or anything. It was just that inner fear in us. But we played hard. I mean, we had some, some um, we had some players on our team that made the major leagues. Wow. Okay. So, make a long story short, um, we lost five to nothing. We came back home. About 25 years later, 
I got a letter. I'm living in Atlanta. And it says that we integrated sports in the South. It hit me. Whoa! <laughs> because I'm a thinker. I also have the Lord working with me and the Holy Spirit and everything. They just show me things all the time. And I said, um, you know what? That was for a reason. It wasn't just for baseball. It's for people to wake up and start thinking because all over the world they have conflicts about frivolous things and people die and they're hungry and in poverty. And even the rich ones are miserable because they cannot put their hand, their mind on what's good. And we're, go we're gonna, you, you've just done the whole show. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right there in your open, <laughs> and I love finished. it. And I love right. it. Thank no, you. you're, you're not finished, we're just getting started. But that's okay, I hear you, I know where you're going. We're just gonna move over right now to Reverend Augustine to just kind of take us back to 1955 yeah. and tell us what was it like growing up then and what was going on with you as you uh, took to baseball as a little leaguer. Yeah, quite interesting. Uh, first of all, after we had been chosen to play the Orlando team, then that means that, that we had to uh, travel there. And during that time, uh, we didn't have interstate traveling. You know, you had to go through the small towns. And at that particular time, if my recollection serves me right, they only had five service stations. And that was a Gulf, Texaco, Pure, Standard, and a Phillips 66 which was the only service station that would allow us to use their bathrooms and drink from their water fountains. So without Phillips 66 service station, we perhaps would never made it to Orlando. Mm. So God moves in a mysterious ways his wonders to perform. He plants his footstep out on the seas. Amen. And he rises <laughs> on every storm. Amen. <laughs> so that, that was quite interesting. Yeah. But just to get there and play and know that we had no incidents, no trouble, no name calling. In fact, we've had a chance to meet the Orlando guys and we bonded with them and it's a great love between uh, those guys and between us. Amazing yeah. grace, yes. how sweet uh, it is. Okay, Admiral well, Leroy. Know, it was, <laughs> to me, it really, it was a wonderful time for me. Uh, I originally was born in Dothan, Alabama and at 12 years old I had not been anywhere but Dothan and Pensacola. And I seem to remember Apalachicola because I had family there. So my really memory is wanting to get out of Pensacola, wanting to go to an area of the state, Florida, where the climate was different, much warmer, uh, a little bit more tropical. And I look forward to riding through areas like Ocala and being able to see the orange trees. Th those were the things I really remember. Uh, the game itself. Uh, as Reverend Augustine has pointed out, I, I don't remember all of that, and I don't say my memory doesn't serve me well. It's just that I was just so excited about getting to Orlando and just being able to play in a, in a ball game, and that's, that uh, it kind of suits me well. Well, that's a fond memory of childhood. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, I guess the thing is, is we're talking about you all making history at a time when um, our state, our country was so segregated. And I know that this had to have a fear factor for you, even as you were traveling, as you just mentioned, Reverend Augustine, sure. and even as you uh, may have approached the game, played the game, and had to go back home. Um, what was that like? Well, I honestly, to be very truthful, uh, I was intimidated. Uh, by the fact that we were away from home and naturally the crowd was with the Orlando team. However, as uh, Willie B. Robinson has said, I didn't really feel any hostility, but just like anything else, there were bugs in my stomach. But the mere fact that we were in another part of the state, uh, one that uh, I thought was uh, very, very, very warm and, you know, and relaxing, and we had ourselves. There may have been some hostility here, there, maybe, but it was 12 of us, if I recall, and we were still a team, and we were all about the same age, and we, were, we had bonded so well, we just enjoyed being, uh, being there. And we, I like to think we played the best that we could under the circumstances. And I always said, just for openers, that had that game been played at our Little League Park in Pensacola, there is a good chance the outcome may have been different, but this picture, 
I'll never forget him. The guy could pitch. <laughs> he really could pitch. Mm -hmm. So that was that was part of it. Mm -hmm. You have anything, Freddie? Yeah. Um, you know, I've heard him talk about you know what what a difference the game would have made if it had been here or there. But the fact of the matter, the game was played and we all had an equal equal opportunity. But uh, just like Admiral said, he he was a good pitcher, no doubt about it. I mean, I'm still waiting to get my first hit off the guy. He was just that good. You know, but but uh, it was just the experience, you know, uh, um, meeting people, uh, playing before a large crowd uh, of people, and, and it was really, it was really excited. And I'll always remember uh, that game, 1955. I always will remember that game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Go, Willie. You know, um, I'm quite sure that everyone in here have seen an Army picture, Warren, going up. They have a problem two miles over. Who do they send? They send the best to go and take care of that and come back, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is 1955. It wasn't easy if you listen to other people. But this chosen 12 and the two coaches were chosen to go down to Orlando, Florida, stand in the middle of the fire just like the three boys in the lion's den. And I think we prevail with unscratched, unmovable. We didn't get scorched in our minds and heart. We didn't get fear in us. We came out whole. And it, but the the only thing that bothers me is that our community did not embrace that situation. They let it die out. And I, as I went through the ages, I forgot about it until one day I got a letter saying mm -hmm. that we were the first black team to ever integrate any sports in the South. And that hurt me more than anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> that you. my own people. They ignored us. <laughs> well, you know, you, you know uh, I, I'm so glad that, that the Haddock Foundation uh, found this story and thought it was important for the whole world to know. Because I, I talked to Ted himself, and he said that's his objective, is to take this movie, or this documentary, to every part of the country. And when people will see it, they will know that, wow, what, what a game. Yes. Uh, history in itself uh, took place on that field. And so that's what I'm so excited about most of all is that I'm a part of history, regardless yes. of what people said. The game was played, and you can't take that away from us because we were a part of it. I'm kind of more or less saddened by the ones that have passed on and didn't get a chance to acknowledge what they had done, you know, guys that were with us. On the, on the field and in the dugout, but uh, uh, it, it will all work out for the best. I think when people see the film tonight, they, they'll be uh, really excited about a uh, long time coming. And we want to, here on the AWARE show, remember those who are not here to have a voice on the program. So um, we'll get a chance to put their names up and pay tribute to them um, as well. And thank you for mentioning you. that. Uh, the viewing that uh, Reverend Augustine is talking about is um, kind of a sneak peek of the film here um, that Pensacola had an opportunity to take a look at. We have an opportunity here on The Aware Show to share part of this with you in this trailer, A Long Time Coming, a 1955 baseball story. Take a look. Like I said earlier, I think I grew up in one of the best times. I'm sorry, that, you know. And yeah, there was, there was, uh, segregation, but <sighs> baseball is the most important sport in America. And if we can integrate baseball, then we can integrate America. I mean, I, they just lived in a certain part of town and we lived in the other side of town. You didn't think about it one way or the other. It angered me. It angered me. But when I got into the Little League Baseball, I felt free. 
Yes, I did feel free. You know, it's awfully easy to be racist when you've never known the other race. And uh, I didn't. When I look at uh, a white person, the first thing I notice about them is their eyes. What's on their mind? They refused to play us because we were black and they were white. Our coach resigned because he would not coach a, a, a game against a black team. Do not send those black boys here or they will come back in a castle. And that's when whole hell broke loose. Yeah, you could almost hate the individual, but then I felt sorry for them also. Nobody should take your dreams away from you, especially a kid. I'm not sure there is a way to heal it. It's ingrained in everybody now. Only thing we were doing was going to go play ball. And that was the spirit of all of us, to play ball. You're watching a powerful, powerful trailer of the film Long Time Coming, a 1955 baseball story that tells the story of the personal journeys of two Little League teams from Florida who helped integrate baseball games in the South more than 60 years ago. And here to share their stories and tell you more about this documentary here in our studio, we have our guests today. We have Willie, we have Freddie, and Admiral Leroy, and also we have the director and the producer of the documentary, us as well here on my left and I want to get to you all going to be coming back back and forth over here getting that history taking it forward with what you're doing thank you so much um, Ted um, for backing these guys up and telling their story hmm. what was it that made you say this is a story that I've got a document this needs to be told to the world hmm. well the, the story is a very compelling one. So once once you learn it, you, you understand. Well, this this is worth telling. I think the backstory for me is one of uh, a, a strong. Um, well, the people who know me well say that I've always had this uh, peacemaking bent, and so um, as I've taken the lead with our family foundation, we've looked for opportunities that engage social justice and bridge building, and so. Um, I'd spent a number of years, uh, a decade or more, doing photography uh, in the human rights world internationally, and uh, all the time knowing that there's injustice in our own backyard. And uh, for me, um, as, a, as, a, as a white man uh, and coming from a place of, of means, um, I always thought, well, um, I, I need to understand our own story better. And so this has been a journey for me. I haven't arrived. It's a, a continual um, process of understanding. But thanks to um, the three gentlemen here and your teammates and, and other colleagues who've walked graciously with us in this process, it's been a huge uh, uh, bright spot in my life. And so. Um, we, we thought this, again, we started this project three years ago, and this is before uh, the most recent presidential election. This is before a uh, number of police shootings. This is before a lot of things that really grieve us in our nation. Uh, there was no shortage of uh, social injustice uh, before, um, but we, th we started to think, well, this th story uh, can open the door to talk about race in America in a winsome way. Uh, it's, it's not a squeaky clean story, but it's against the backdrop of a lot of horrific injustice. And here's a moment in history that kind of got lost in, in the shuffle, got buried down for more than 60 years, and no one had done a book about it, no one had done a film about it, and we thought this story is a gem that needs to be told, that this is where uh, one example where things went the way they should have gone. And uh, what can we learn from that? What can we uh, teach our kids about that? How does that apply to today? So when we started the film, we thought it was going to be about 1955 only, this historic story. And we click, quickly learned that it's just as much about today. And we had spent, uh, again, a couple of years together uh, un getting to know each other. And we thought uh, there, there's these parallel stories going on. And so um, when you see the film, you'll, you'll uh, understand that. I, f I feel like it's a home run. 
<laughs> no pun intended. I mean, because of everything that you just said and, and the heart that is coming from these men mm -hmm. and their stories and, and, and Willie sharing. Um, and, and it's a very emotionally charging uh, conversation and mm -hmm. opportunity to grasp history, history and to share it. Mm -hmm. um, what was this like for you, uh, John? John Strong, the director of the film. You're not used to being in the front of the camera, mm -mm. but <laughs> here on the Aware Show, uh, you join us to tell us a little bit about what this has been like, kind of uh, traveling along this journey with them back in time. <clears throat> well, getting to know these guys was awesome, um, a lot of fun, and uh, and the same with the Orlando players. So we we found, uh, as you saw from the trailer, uh, both the the black team and the white team interviewed them. Um, and then tried to see if we could make something happen between them. Um, so as I was making it, you know, I think the feeling I got was <clears throat> it felt like uh, God cracked an egg 60 years ago and took 60 years to boil it, and the egg being the story, mm. that this thing happened and no one heard about it, it did nothing, and yet somehow it, it does matter for today. And so it was kind of just coming to a point of, importance um, in, in their lives and, and obviously in my life. Um, and I think for me, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm not into baseball. Uh, and I, I, Everyone is. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Oddball. I know, I know. Un-American. I know, I know. No, I know. just kidding. <laughs> um, and so what I was interested in here was um, not really the game then, mm -hmm. but today, um, you, you have these 70-year-old guys on both teams, white and black, uh, with a lot of history, a lot of racial history of pain. 75. There you go, 75 years. <laughs> um, and how do we, just because they played this game 60-some-odd uh, years ago, uh, doesn't mean that they're just squeaky clean people and they all care about racial issues and anything like that, or that they all love each other. So I was sort of interested in going at that with them and with the white team and all these issues that we don't really know how to talk about. I mean, I, I, I really love the Black Lives Matter movement. And uh, it's angry and, and very, um, which is good. And from my white perspective, of course, I don't know how to have the conversation in a way that leads to growth. Mm -hmm. And so for me, this film was me with this story trying to figure out like, okay, it's good to get angry. Get angry, deal with it like cry, feel it, but how do we use that to then talk? And so that's kind of what the film is to me is with all the racial tensions and, you know, um, a lot of differing uh, opinions about what is right and wrong politically um, from all the players, how do we talk? That's what the film is to me. Very good. For someone who likes to be behind the camera, you did a really good job in the front of it with that. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, yeah, sure, Willie's just raising his hand. I love it. Go, Willie. Yeah, but I, uh, <clears throat> see, to um, understand what's going on, you can't cosmet, how do you say that, cosmetic? Mm -hmm. You have to See, God made this world, mm -hmm. and he wants everything in this world to operate the way he set the rules. Right. Not because someone else want to alter them, because they don't want to believe in God. You see what I mean? You're going to take us to church? No. <laughs> You're about to say amen. Well, he's, <laughs> no. Two, okay. He said, whenever two or more gather in my name, I'm in the midst. All right. You got me? Okay, and I'm going to cut it short because <laughs> at the same time is that we go and try to figure out all the problems ourselves. We train professors, scientists, things like that. And Jesus, God, he just snapped his finger and everything is the way he wanted it to be. And that that is so simple. That's the way you do it. But the main thing is to get a person Okay, when people say heart, they put their hand on their chest, don't they? But that is not what the Bible is talking about. He said, the heart of me. Your heart is in your belly, which is the heart of you. It's not this tick box, see? 
where you can replace it five or six different times. Then who are you? You see what I mean? The Lord said, love one another as I love you in the church. That's all. It's just that simple. And I know this wasn't supposed to be a religious or this and that, and that sermon, but if you want the bottom line, if you want the truth, you just go to God and he'll straighten it out. He, I mean, he healed people from cancer. Uh, he stopped people from getting children run over by cars. Mm -hmm. He may catch you falling off of a mountain and this and that and yeah, that and that. He, and that. Yeah, See definitely, what I mean? Definitely so, he's amazing. So we, we could be real here sitting here and discussing about that baseball game. Well, that baseball game was just like a candle, shining light. Say, hey, I'm here, look at me, study of me, what's going on? That, that candle is, is going to glow, grow and grow and grow. Now, I'm finished. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I said that for a reason, because I'm, I'm noticing everyone here sitting here got character, and they mean it, and y'all are not here for nothing. You got, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you believe in God, you ask the Holy Spirit for the things that I already know to lead me and guide me to all the truth, and this will be a better world. Amen. Thank you. Now that's, that that that's would be the answer right there. But <laughs> <Yes, we will. laughs> Thank you so much, Willie, really, for sharing that with us. <laughs> I do want to... Um, to talk to you all about, it's obvious how the game has impacted Willie. Yes. Uh, how, and you're a pastor as well, yes. um, Pastor Augustine. How has the game played back in 1955 impacted your life? Through, just bring us through your life to, to now. Well, that game has impacted my life significantly. Um, every time I think about it, you know, just being one of the 12, you know, to be able to play uh, something as simple as a baseball game and in terms would make history after 63 years is awesome, you know. Well, I mean, we, we played the game for fun, right. but not knowing that one day that we'll be sitting in front of this camera talking about something happened uh, in August uh, 1955 in uh, Orlando, Florida. It's amazing. And that's the way history works. Mm -hmm. It never erases itself. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be talked about. And, and that's what we're here today uh, doing is talking about uh, that very, very important game that was played in Orlando, Florida. Admiral Roy? Well, you, you know, the way... Spider? That it really, really <laughs> impacted me. Uh, I took uh, kind of a different route. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to thank uh, Ted Haddock and the Haddock Family Foundation for bringing this story forward. But you see, in <clears throat> 1978, I moved to Hollywood, California, and I went out there to break into the music, film, and entertainment industry. I stayed out there 13 years, and I made it pretty good in music, but the closest I got in film was an extra on a lot of the TV shows. And then to move back to Pensacola and find myself being the subject of history that was made 63 years ago and to see myself on film and I would sometimes laugh to myself, now you went to Hollywood for this, <laughs> now you come back to Pensacola, which is your small hometown, and now you're in a film documentary. I mean, so who would have thought it? I mean, right, right. You made it. You made it. Yeah. So, you know, we're yeah. we keep talking about this story. It's kind of buried in our history. And, and really, you know, Pensacola to be buried, you know, I'm so glad I, and honored again on the Aware Show to have you all come and tell your story. But I just want to know why. Why was it buried? And, you know, um, what, what do you all see as the reason why the story hasn't been told before. And I'm coming to you, Ted and John, to just talk to you guys about um, why you're so happy to, to make sure that it is told again. But, but I just want to get it from you all because there's a different perspective coming from point. the people who made the history and made the well, story, you, but it's not told. Well, you know, um, I, I can't think of the exact year, but a guy <laughs> by the name of Travis Fine came from Los Angeles, California uh, to, to uh, pursue this story. And he got in touch with me, and we talked about it. And we got in touch with all the guys. 
And he went back to California, never heard from him again. Then uh, about two, what, 15, uh, a lady started this story, but it, it never, it never matured. Materialized. Yeah, but uh, when that, the Haddock Foundation <laughs> got a whimp of this story, and <laughs> they knew that this story needed to be told, uh, they, they went to work on it immediately. And you know, I should never forget the first day that we started, we started this story, uh, this documentary, I had, I had been talking to Demetrius uh, quite a bit over the phone. And so he told me, he said, Freddie, he now said. Now you got to tell who Demetrius is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Demetrius is one of the guys that handle all the logistics. Right, for, yeah, for, for the Haddock for Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Okay. He said, we come into Pensacola, and he said, this is what we want to do. He said, we want to go to a place where you couldn't go where you, when you were growing up. So that means we went to East Pensacola Heights. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the way that story started. And, mm -hmm. and he, it was awesome from the first uh, March when the day that we started mm -hmm. until we came to the conclusion. Now of this it. was a, John, we talked about it kind of off camera in the green room. Um, this was a time when uh, they would have experienced uh, possible physical harm um, and also, um, as you see, emotional uh, issues and even uh, social uh, issues at this time. Um, have you, uh, how do you feel about the fact that you all were able to go back, get this, and, and, and know this about then and what you're now, not, not quite having to worry about it as severe now? I'm, I, I'd love to hear Ted's thoughts on this, but uh, I mean, you know, I've seen a lot of films, documentaries about that time, uh, and it's very impactful. Um, the, the, you know, the extreme nature of, of how African Americans were treated. Um, and so, I mean, I think all of us have seen that. And, and again, I think what, I, what we were focusing on here was kind of the, the more internal story, um, not, not the people who got sprayed with hoses, right, right. but the people who um, were just subtly abused daily mm -hmm. um, throughout their whole childhood. You know, um, we had one of our characters who, unfortunately, characters, one of our men in the, on the team, a guy named Cleve Daly, who uh, unfortunately died uh, six months ago. Um, you know, he was just a shoeshine guy in Pensacola. And, um, and this is right after Emmett Till happened. And uh, some white guys drove by and whistled at a girl. And a uh, shop owner was like, did you just wish whistle at that girl to Cleve and brought a knife to him? Right, so um, obviously very similar to the Emmett Till situation and something that I can't um, imagine dealing with at that age or ever. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think in that way, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. And, um, obviously, it's become a lot more subtle or, mm -hmm. um, you know, in today or uh, even, you know, what they call microaggressions. I hate that word, but it is very true. I mean, even just seeing, it is what the, it is. seeing the film Get Out, you know. Ted, Ted I mean, mm -hmm. you even now in doing this, you know, there could be, you know, fallout or social, um, you know, dislike in what you've done in, in bringing this. Um, how do you respond to that? How do you feel about it? Uh, whatever potential risks there are, they're nothing compared to, to what um, the players and their families and coaches faced uh, in 1955. And there were, there were risks on uh, the Orlando side too. Um, thinking about the coaches allowing their kids to be the first one to play against an African-American team. And so uh, I think for the Pensacola coaches, it was, I mean, part of what fascinates me about this is the timing, the chronology of the civil rights movement. So, mm -hmm. you know, something special happened in Montgomery around the bus boycott. Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, um, you know, aside from local friends and family, the nation had not heard their names. And so when you played your ball game, their names were not household names. And so uh, the, there was something special about this moment, this barrier breaking moment, that was right at the dawn of this organized civil rights movement. And so um, uh, I think that uh, the game being played in 1955 was right on the heels of Brown v. Board. So there's this sense of, okay, now we can start testing this. We can see how uh, genuine these rules are. Let's see if we can uh, be included in some of the things. And so the coaches, your coaches knew that Little League did not discriminate. 
from the beginning it was an integrated organization but because it was decentralized the the uh, leadership of, of the local uh, teams and clubs and tournaments were left to the local leaders so um, in Pensacola for example it was left to the the local uh, director and they said not on my watch. We're not. You're not a real team. They made all kinds of excuses. Uh, that, you that think were, it was out of fear from the other guys? Yeah. Oh, I think it was all, it's all fear. I mean, okay. that's why everybody makes such horrible decisions. Even today, it's all. If you if you chase it down, it's all based in fear. I think. You know, we live in a country full of fear, and it's really really sad. Um, well, what are, what are you hoping um, this film will accomplish? in terms of you think about fear and you think about what you hope to, to um, kind of confront or how would we say just kind of educate, make people aware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, you know, I've noticed this with other films too. Sometimes we can talk about a, a current issue by looking at a parallel story from the past. Um, and so I, I hope that this story gets us to think, oh, okay, well, I mean, you're looking at it in these, these characters interacting with each other, but the relationship of uh, uh, Stuart Hall and Will Prayer coming together, these are, these are two of the, uh, an Orlando player and a Pensacola player mm -hmm. who are not with us on the show today. Mm -hmm. um, the steps they took to get to know each other, and it was deliberate. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was real on camera. We never gave anyone words to say, but it Good. was intentional. And so what you see in the film is, is, is a genuine friendship blossoming and so I think that I'm hoping viewers will um, do a little self-analysis um, identify some own bi some of their own biases some of my own biases and be willing to just be quiet enough long enough to, to listen mm -hmm. try to understand now I'm biased you know and I can't help it I, I, I see mm -hmm. the big picture I love this but you're gonna have you know opposition is going to say who cares or what uh, what's the point if it's been quiet all this time why say something now what do you say to that I'll tell you I'll tell you this much uh, since Reverend Augustine and I are the only two pretty much that are still here in Pensacola the other gentlemen's are in other places and we have talked many times on the telephone saying to ourselves that Man, they treated us like we were kings in Orlando. And they came up to us after the film with their kids and, and their cameras and their baseballs, having us autographed. And they, they gave us the real feeling that they had just witnessed something that was very, very educational for them. Mm. So Reverend Augustine and I said, but you know, we live in the Panhandle. And when that film comes to Pensacola, I don't know if we're going to get the overall reception that we got from that audience in Orlando. Understanding, of course, the population down there is something that we were told about three and a half million people from all over the world. And, and Pensacola so is nowhere near that. There's an understanding there, but <laughs> right. Pensacola, you are still, we are still kind of stuck in gear. And Reverend Augustine and I said, I just wonder how, I, and we didn't say we wonder. We know that there, if we're going to raise some eyebrows with this film uh, tonight. There are some people that I know after 27 years in publishing in the Pensacola area, I know some people are going to be very upset that this Why? is being told. They want to kind of hide the truth. They don't really want it known, the overall feeling of this Why? community. Well, you know, some people are going to say I'm paying a race car, but hold on, hold on, Willoughby. It's, it's, it's racism. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, really, it's subtle in certain ways, but it's undercover racism. Racism now? Are you kidding? Oh, my goodness. Probably more now than Just saying. Ever. Just uh, asking. I, I, I wasn't <laughs> trying to not say it, but right. since you asked me, I mean, I, <laughs> as I said, being a publisher here in this community for 27 mm -hmm. years with a lifestyle publication that kind of covers all of the issues and the basis, I've met a lot of people in my 74, going on 75 years of just living, and I know what I know. I don't know what I don't know. But I know that the underlining cause is we just can't seem to get past that embedded situation involving racism. And as a, as a very successful businessman here in the city, whose name I won't call at this time, but he is super successful, he gave us a cover story. 
And the cover story, he discussed uh, having moved here from Chicago, Illinois, and he said to uh, us in that cover story that he don't think all of white people are, are, are racist. He said, but in this community of Pensacola, it's been so embedded in their culture that a lot of times they are performing it and don't truly fully realize it. And, but it exists, and, and as I said, uh, there, are, there are just a number of other little, little things that are in between. But by and large, uh, we will see, won't we, Reverend, yes, uh, in you terms know, of how all, they feel? You all received a very big reception, as you mentioned, in Orlando. Yes, you even got the key to the city, yes. and that was your opposition <laughs> team that yes. you, you played. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see about getting you a key to Pensacola's city. Uh, that would be nice. Okay, let's say you took about 10 rattlesnakes in a den 30 years ago. And two miles down the road, here you have a bunch of scorpions, st stings on them. Then they had offsprings up to 20 years later on. They still got that poison in those rattlesnakes, and they got that those uh, stingrays got those stings on them. Until a movement is made to rid them. See, most people, especially in the political arena, they have a tendency to leave out God, mm -hmm. and they may. Nobody looking, <laughs> you know, but other than that, they want everybody to think that this is man's words making this better, making this real. But the Bible says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. He said, by my stripes you are healed, mind, body, soul, and spirit. You just have to get down to what the reality is if you want to, if you want it to be better, if you don't want to be a hypocrite all the time and just the world come together. It doesn't mean matter if it's white or black or yellow or red. God made all people. And the ones that disobeyed him, which was Lucifer, which was the beautiful angel, he kicked him out of heaven down to hell. Mm -hmm. He took one third of the demons with him. Okay. That's, that's what's down there in hell now, is Lucifer okay. causing all this all mess. Right. Which leads me to all talk right. about long time coming. <laughs> <laughs> no correlation. <laughs> Stop it. That's y'all. That's y'all. Here's the deal about <laughs> long time coming. Um, this is an opportunity for uh, the world to see Pensacola, uh, Orlando history, uh, history in the United States as uh, these 12 year old boys, three are here with us now, were able to change the game, change the way the game was played here in the South. You all are capturing that with this film. You're getting uh, already getting accolades for the film. Um, and I understand um, some very big news and information coming up um, uh, in 2018 for you all as well in showing this film. Tell us more about it, John. Yeah, uh, in July it'll be showing uh, at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. and uh, showing to senators and congressmen and women. And um, so that'll be really cool. I mean, that's kind of obviously we're going to different film festivals um, and uh, you know, the Haddock Foundation is wanting to make curriculum to help take this from a movie into actually, you know, integrating it into people's lives. But, I mean, uh, yeah, playing at the Library of Congress is yes. um, pretty... It's pretty big for you, for you too, being a director. Uh, t tell us about uh, the fact that the Haddock Foundation has, has gotten this wonderful opportunity to do what John has said, to take it to the next level. We're grateful. I mean, mm -hmm. we, I think from the very beginning, we wanted to aim high and... and Dream big and, and the Library and so of Congress. That's a good place to start. That's a good place to start. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. But it is a story worth telling, and I, I know we've talked around the story. Uh, maybe if I can just say sure. one one Zoom in. Zoom in. one image that I've. I mean, where it clicked for me is that we all love the Jackie Robinson story. 
very important, inspiring. You know, kids forever will be talking about Jackie Robinson, and we love him. And this is not taking anything away from him at all. But in, and I think in a lot of ways his his role was a very symbolic one. Mm -hmm. He broke in at the highest level, but it really didn't change anything in the South. I mean, you you know, you were you were playing baseball as kids. Um, you know, years after that, and, and there's there's lots of segregation. So I think he was the first step. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, and probably using too many words to say it, is yeah. that this game is the Jackie Robinson story at a local level with kids, because that needed to happen at a high level with with Mr. Robinson, and we're grateful for that first step. And then there need to be other steps after that. And your coaches and your families and yourselves stepped onto that field to take it local. And, and uh, because it was the first time in the South, it made ripple effects all through Florida, made ripple effects all through neighboring states in the South, and there was no going back. And I would also just say, you know, why does this actually matter? Does it matter? <clears throat> and I think um, the fact that it was such a small thing is why it matters, because you can have these big moments, Jackie Robinson, Emmett Till, um, all these things that are huge, needed, beautiful moments. But it has to also be, to remember, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and it did change a right, lot, right, right. you know, governmentally. But in mm -hmm. terms of people's hearts, it starts at a very small level with very unimportant moments, right? So it's yes. just small drops that slowly fill the pail of mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. Where are you all hoping this will go from here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I. I mean, I would love to see it go not only film festivals and these sort of showcase venues where we get some media attention and lots mm -hmm. of conversation around it. I'd really love to see it get in schools. Okay. And I'd love to see it, particularly in the South. I mean, I think whether we're dealing with race or there's some other um, barrier that needs to be broken, I mean, mm -hmm. the, these lessons are applicable throughout. I mean, even between husband and wife and parents and kids, it's like we all have that thing to work through. Um, so I think the lessons we learned from this story that you've shared with us uh, is, is something great. I'd love to see get into um, a, a school curriculum throughout mm -hmm. the country. Very good. And I'd love for it to be on Netflix uh, <laughs> and Amazon okay. Prime. Uh, mm -hmm. And I do want to just say one of the coolest parts about this, it's about racism. It's about uh, <clears throat> looking in someone's eyes and hearing their story, uh, even if you don't fully agree with them. How do you do that? But uh, it's just, you get to know these guys and you just fall in love with them. You is sure a, do. Is a huge part of it. Yeah. And great men, character, and character just like funny, sad. It's uh, getting to know them is part of the, the beauty of the film. Do you all see yourselves as heroes or do you see yourselves as history makers? I mean, what's that like? That, that's, that's the one thing that still kind of, <laughs> kind of got me a little yeah. mixed is that Come on, I, not I, the I, man I who went really, all the way to Hollywood. No, to get truly, it. I just haven't got my arms or my head around the fact that we really truly made history. We were told this by our coaches at 12 years old, mm -hmm. which you know didn't mean very much to us. We wanted to play the game. But here, 63 years later, I'm still trying, and you know, you heard all this Hollywood out of me, but I'm still trying to digest what's really happening, and, and, and I believe it. It's not <laughs> like it's unbelievable, but. I still have not grasped that we really, really have made history. Reverend mm -hmm. Augustine remind me all the time, say, man, we, we, we made history. We made history. And he, 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 he has kind of driven that point home to me, but I still kind of ride around sometimes by myself, and I say, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just spider. So people I mean, can I live a know, lifetime and not yeah. ever be on the map to some right. degree. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean, yeah. Willie? Yeah. Quickly, yeah. Willie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, the time that's, is winding down for so. the show. Look, uh, haven't you ever heard this song before? A change is gonna come. Yes. All right. So what do you say? I was born <laughs> by the river. Okay, come we on. don't have the rights to the song. <laughs> oh, no, 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 what I want to say is, look. You can only sing a bar. Okay. That's it, that's it, no more. That's, that's it. it. Okay, so y'all wasting my time now, right? Because what I want to say is, every one of y'all, say it's a mistake. Say it's something good and you're involved in it. Mm -hmm. So you're a part of a change is gonna come. It's mm -hmm. got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
over it. I thought about it. I said, yes, I'm a star. I made history. <laughs> you were all star then. You're a big star for us now. Once you get your list together, because I don't want to um, forget the names of the players and, and the people who also um, who were a part of this game and a part of history who are not here. Um, some of them, there were 12 of you. I believe there's only about a half a dozen of you, maybe six now survivors um, still with us. Um, and so we want to give you an opportunity to um, name them here on the AWARE show. And so we uh, kind of pay tribute to those who made history. Um, and we want to be a voice to them and make our uh, viewers aware of who they are. Do you remember them off the top of your head? Because I don't see your list. No, but Reverend Augustine. <laughs> really, I guarantee. And I'll pick up the slack after he named. But he, I think he can name all of them. Okay. Well, first of all, we like to mention uh, Robert East. Uh, Richard Morris, uh, Percy Boykins, um, Philip Stewart, uh, Clyde Charlie, Richard Morris. And what's so fascinating about Richard, he, he was the only guy that, that, that didn't graduate from Washington High School and made the team. He, he graduated from Catholic High, uh, St. Joseph Catholic High School. So, but all, all the other guys that were on that team, we graduated from Washington High School. And it wasn't hard during that time because that was the only school we had to go to. Okay. Did you, yeah. you want you to finish the names because yeah. we're going to put them up on the screen. And Cleve Daly. Cleve Daly was the last one. Yeah, okay. that's it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And that was the team yeah. who okay. changed the game. See what I told you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew you could well, name them. How, how do you all want to be remembered? Well, the, the game changers Well, <laughs> I, Pensacola? It, it's not whether we want to be rem how we want to be remembered. Will, will we be remembered? Mm -hmm. But we will be remembered because mm -hmm. it's in history. Yes. And so when whenever uh, somebody starts thinking about little league baseball and the first team to integrate the little league world series in the South, including Alabama, Mississippi, Kentucky, you know, all those southern states, then our names will come up, and then we'll be remembered as being a part of that 1955 Little League World Series team. To help restore dignity, dignity in the black race and, bet and between the white race. Mm -hmm. Lots of dignity. I hear that. That's right. Now, go ahead. You know what I Admiral think about real Roy? quickly. Sure. Uh, uh, out of the things that Reverend Augustine as well as Willie B have said uh, about how we would like to be remembered, what I really think about all the time, and it just makes me feel so wonderfully well, is that I now not only have kids, I have grandkids, and now I have great-grandkids. And the thing that's really, really uh, fascinating for me is that out of all whatever is remembered, it's much of my family would be here tonight, is that my kids and my grandkids and my great-grandkids are going to be able to say, that's our granddaddy, that's, he was a part of it, that's, that's what they did. And, and that just really penetrates me because I got a little seven-month-old, very new mm -hmm. great-granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And I'm already thinking that as she grows, that at one day she's going to be, she'll, she's prob gonna be a she'll probably be watching tonight, but <laughs> at seven months, you know. But, but as she gets older, yeah. you know, she's going to have something that she can point to it, uh, when she's in school and say, yeah. My granddad was in a movie. He did this. He did that. <laughs> but, I mean, but, that's... My, my granddad, so if you were Spider, <laughs> if you're Spider, does that make her a little Spider? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, they have all these nicknames in baseball. So why do they call you Spider, quickly? I was eight years old, mm -hmm. seven years old. We were out on the porch in our little neighborhood. And we were all, as little seven, eight-year-olds, were just making fun of each other. <laughs> and somehow or another, when it got around to me, one of the guys say, you know what? With those long arms and long legs, you remind me of a black widow spider. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just just That's jumped awesome. to it. And next thing I know, no, even my mother, that. God bless her soul, my mother never called me uh, Admiral. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She said Spider. It, it, this is mom, I mean, that's, that's just the way, that's what, the way it turned and out. And what a great first name, too, Admiral. I tell uh, you uh, what, you got it going on. You get to be He's a great basketball player. Too. Oh, really? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, no. That's, a, that's another story. In that's another story. <laughs> Well, and we know that um, you uh, are successful here in the Pensacola area running your own, or at this point, uh, probably more or less not running it, uh, mm -hmm. your own publication. Um, uh, yeah. So we want to make mention of that, too. Yeah, yeah. We started uh, 
after soon after I got back from uh, from the Hollywood area, uh, my mom actually suggested mm -hmm. I come home because mm -hmm. my daughters were growing up, uh, and they uh, my mom felt like uh, I needed to be here before they got out of school to, right. to, to bond with them and. It's I kept okay. saying to myself, I said, well, what am I going to do when I get back there? I'm all hung out for music and entertainment. So the magazine concept came to me, thanks to God. And I said that, and honestly, I had a little serious agenda. It was like, if you get successful with the magazine, you can work your way back to Hollywood. And still <laughs> so it was have. always about Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. And what's but the name of the magazine just for people uh, to know? Out Front. Know all Out about front it. Magazine. Very good. We only have a minute here. I just want to give you each an opportunity just to say something like quick here on the Aware Show as we remember the men who made history here in Pensacola, the myths, the legends, uh, the little leaguers who changed the game uh, back in 1955. John? I'm glad I got to know all you guys and so glad that I got to make this film. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank Ted? you, John. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ted. Um, you know, my heart, we've talked many times. I love you. and. Our kids love you, and I'm excited about what what they get to learn. And they, everyone who comes after us will be repeating this story, and we won't probably see the full result of it. But I'm thank you for sharing your your story and life with us. Beautiful, I love yeah. that. I yeah. love yeah. that. Very quickly, <laughs> ten seconds. <laughs> Willie, you're on. I'm through. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Augustine. Well, I want to I want to tell you thank you for having us on this show today. Sure. Thank it's you for a, being here. It's been a blessing. Hmm. Very good. <laughs> Even shorter. Uh, Spider. Oh. Admiral Leroy. I don't know if words Leroy. can express how, how happy I am. And many times I've watched the well, and now I'm on the show <laughs> with Dee Dee Shaw, <laughs> who I've known uh, through okay. your work, through your work for a long time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm honored. Thank you all. I think the all best right. is yet, yet to come. Amen. There it is. That's all the time we have for now. Again, I want to thank my guests for being here in the studio and sharing their stories and taking a sneak peek at this film. Florida's Little League State Championship in 1955 represents a shining moment in our nation's history when children led us all toward a better way of living. And as you can see, Pensacola played a big part in sports history, hopefully. You'll check out the film, Long Time Coming, a 1955 baseball story when it's released. Meantime, be sure to check us out on YouTube, like us, and catch us on WSRE.org. I'm Dee Dee Sharp saying until the next time, stay informed and stay aware.